Um, we started last year with uh, an experiment of what do we have to do technically and from a legal perspective to be able to pay our um, employees if they want to in Bitcoin. And um, I'm going to take five minutes to explain you um, what this is all about. But let me just summarize it or let me just start with a management summary. The conclusion is paying your employees in Bitcoin is not something you want to do right now because the volatility of Bitcoin is so high right now so that you create only a very little interest among your employees and um, the ones who are interested in investing Bitcoin right now will do it already on their private base so it doesn't really make sense from an economic perspective. This is what we learned over the last 12 months but it's still interesting to play around with the technology and this is what we do. We build a showcase. Um, we could switch it on any time um, if the interest rises and I think as volatility goes down and more people start to accept Bitcoin really as a store of value, then this could uh, really switch. It could be a tipping point and then suddenly you could have an advantage if you have um, found what it takes in advance actually. For us talking about Bitcoin as an IT company is also interesting because it is for us a window into how the future of work could look like if people have sound money. Um, we've learned today that software engineers are usually ahead of everybody else in adoption of Bitcoin because they learned about it years ago and usually they've understood it before or years before um, everybody else understood it. Um, which means that we probably have among our 500 software employees, we have probably like one handful of people who don't have to work anymore for money um, because they had Bitcoin early on. And that leads to an interesting question. How do you motivate people who don't have to work for money anymore? And how do you actually prepare your culture to be able to attract talents who don't have to work because they need to pay their bills at the end of the month, but they love their work so much that despite of they have enough sound money in their wallet, they still come to work every day. And this is also part of a social experiment which is very interesting for us because it forces us to build a culture where people come to work voluntarily and not because of the payment. And uh, we, that changes the corporate culture, obviously. Um, people tend to adjust their time, to time preference, which we've learned, so they work less in general than they used to work before. Um, this is something we see. We've got far more people who want to work part-time um, than actually uh, we had before. And uh, we have more, I would say, pressure on us as managing these companies to provide enough useful projects, to, avoid, uh, to provide enough projects with purpose, and to provide a working environment where people really love to come to work and love to participate in certain projects. And one of um, our en engagements for this ecosystem, but also a lot of other ecosystems like LoRa, IoT, Network and others, is basically because it attracts talents and attracts people who want to participate in ecosystems like this and want to actually voluntarily participate in these networks. Um, if we come back to the, um, to the original topic, um, Paying your employees with Bitcoin is a little bit tricky because of regulations in Germany. Because of regulation in Germany means Bitcoin is neither a legal tender, not a foreign currency at the moment. Um, but you can use it um, as a company um, for a short period of time as long as you don't trade with it and as long as you use it only for a transaction. Um, that means um, we don't trade with Bitcoin and we try to minimize the time we have Bitcoin in our wallet because if we would keep it 
longer, it would be considered as speculation, as trading, and then we would have serious impact um, with regulation if we do this. So one of the conclusions we came to is um, we should minimize the time that we as a company actually possess the Bitcoin, and we should really get it and redistribute it to our employees and keep this cycle as short as possible. This was probably the biggest learning um, we had when we um, came around all the regulatory um, stuff we had to keep in mind. Um, what do we do? Um, I'll show you, um, probably this is the best chart I can show you. Um, we have employees who can um, decide in a self-service portal how much of their income they want to spend in BTC. Then we have written little pieces of software which you can see here and here, um, which means we automatically from the self-service portal deduct the amount people want to spend in Bitcoin from their um, paycheck and we transfer it to our bank Via the bank, um, we do a classic SIPA money, money transfer to Bitstamp. Why Bitstamp? Because Bitstamp was for us the best API approachable exchange we could find by the time um, we, bit, we did this analysis. Um, then we um, divided onto um, the shares of the people in Bitcoin and uh, we send it out um, from our company wallet um, to the um, people who can then receive it in their wallet. We had actually three learnings. One was build a self-service portal because if Bitcoin is as volatile as it is now, Bitcoin people change their preferences um, very often and you don't want to deal with that um, in your human resources paycheck department. Um, second is keep this uh, part of the process so from fiat money into Bitcoin in your wallet and then redistribute it to the people as short as possible to avoid issues with regulations you would otherwise have um, and um, which you would also not only have regulation wise but which you would also have from a HR legal perspective because um, if we have uh, bought Bitcoin on behalf of our employees we have it two days in our Trezor wallet and then um, Bitcoin dumps by 15% or there's a, a crash or whatever, then it would be a difficult situation to discuss it with your employees why you didn't process this earlier or if you are liable for actually the losses they had. So also from, a, from this perspective, you want to redistribute it uh, quite quickly. So then um, we have written um, a few scripts and a little bit of software um, that actually then redistributes it um, to the wallets of the employees who had here in the self-service um, app the chance to um, decide what percentage of their um, of their salary they would like to receive in in, in Bitcoin. As I said before, this was my introduction. Um, we haven't brought it into production yet. Um, because in the crypto winter we had in the last 15 months um, interest due to volatility and um, actually lower Bitcoin prices dropped so much that we just didn't create enough interest within the company. But we're still happy we've done it because we've learned a lot about the technology, we've learned a lot about regulations, we learned a lot about dealing with cryptocurrencies in the company and the learning in and in itself was worth the experiment we did. Um, we have everything production ready now so as soon as volatility goes down and the crypto market matures, we're ready actually to pay our... Um, our employees in Bitcoin. That's it from my perspective. Thanks for having me here. And uh, if there are any questions right now or after uh, Daniel decides if we can, if you have time for a few questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Olga. So actually, I have one question. Okay. Um, can we back up? Can, no, uh, maybe it takes too much okay. time. So my question is just, uh, 
did you consider just one uh, treasure wallet for your company, or do you actually uh, did it with a multi-sig setup? Um, we haven't done it with a multi-sig setup yet, but this is definitely a road we would go to if it matures before we go into production. With and it. the treasure currently is controlled by you? Uh, no, I'm probably not going to reveal this on stage. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to reveal this on okay. stage. It's controlled, um, but it's, um, w uh, we will definitely go to a multi-sig environment. Yeah, awesome. definitely. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, if you have more questions uh, to what they are doing, what, what um, Maibon Wolf is doing, Holger, you are around? For some beer yes, I'm around here. Okay, uh, great. And there's uh, there are some people from you, uh, also very um, knowledgeable about Bitcoin. They are probably very happy to answer all your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel.